<coughs> Hello viewers, I am Mr. Dilip Kumar Pal, stand before you with a topic, Property Rights of Women in India. It is found in plus three first semester, Political Science General Elective and the name of the paper is Feminism Theory and Practice. But before I discuss property rights of women in India, I want to inform my viewers that the name of my channel is at the rate Dilip Kumar Pal 9375. Never forget, where you will find more than 560 videos relating to plus two faster political science, up to plus two secondary political science. Both ODI and English video, plus three first semester political honors, up to plus three six semester political honors, many videos of environmental studies, ethics and values, political science general elective, up plus three first semester, some videos of ethics and values, political science general elective, up plus three second semester, some videos of ethics and values, up plus three third semester. I request my viewers to subscribe my channel if you have not subscribed for your future and you are those of your friends who are in above classes about this channel so some students will be benefited remember never hesitate to give help to anybody it is a symptom of a human being let us start property rights of women in India. What women in India have their property rights? Let us start. In the subject feminism, a chain of vital concepts are found. Among these, property rights of women in India is regarded as a very vital concept. About the property rights of women in India, following are the provisions. In the subject feminism, a chain of vital concepts are found. Among these, property rights of women in India is considered as a vital concept. In India, women have property rights and with the property rights of women, there are various types of schools. There are various types of provisions. Various schools are associated with the property rights of women in India. Provisions relating to property rights of women in India. A school which relates with it. There are various schools which relate with property rights of women in India. One school is Mitaksar School. Mitaksar School. Mitaksar School is a school which relates with property rights of women. What it speaks? about the property rights of women. It is a type of thought relating to inheritance of property in India. It is a type of thought which relates with the inheritance of property in India. This type of thought is prevalent all over India except West Bengal, Bihar, Kerala and Jharkhand. This Mitaska school is prevalent all over India except four states like West Bengal, Bihar, Jharkhand and Kerala. The founder of this school is Bijna Neshwara. Bijna, Bijna Neshwara. He is the founder. Following are features of school relating to inheritance of property. About inheritance of property, Mithaskar school speaks following things. So what views Mithaskar school speaks about property rights of women, number one. Division of property is possible even when father is alive. About the inheritance of property, what Mithaska school speaks, number one. Division of property is possible even when father is alive. Even if father is alive, property of the family can be divided. Division of property is possible even when father is alive. Even if father is alive, Pro family property can be divided. Number two, father is the owner of 
self earned property, not the ancestral property. Father is the owner of self earned property. What property he has earned? But he is not the owner of ancestral property. Number three, a male child immediately after his birth is entitled a share in the family and will become a coparcenary of the family property. Coparcenary means legal heir of family property. Another provision of Mithaskar school is that a male child immediately after his birth in the family he will become a coparcenary or legal heir of the family property. Now four, women of the family will not have equal share in the family property with the with their male counterparts. In the system, women of the family will not get equal share from the family property with their counterparts. It means women members of the family will not get same share as male members of family will get. Fifth, widow of family will not get any share from the family property. In a family, widows will not get, will not get any share from the family property. Six, it is based on two principles. Mithaska school is based on two principles like devolution by survivorship means only survivors of the Family will get a share in family property. It, be, it is based on two principles. Devolution by survivorship. It means only survivors will get a share from the family property, not the dead one. And devolution of succession. It means property of the family can be transferred to the legal heirs. Property can be transferred to the legal heirs. So this is all about the Mithaska school about the inheritance of property. Now see, Doyabhag school, it is another school of thought. It is confined to Bengal and Eastern Bihar only. It is confined to West Bengal and Eastern Bihar only. Jimuto Bahana was the propounder of this school. Jimuto Bahana was the propounder of this school. It is also related with inheritance of family property. Following are the main features of the school. So, what views Doyavad school speaks about inheritance of property, family property? Number one, in the lifetime of father, family property cannot be divided. So long as father is alive, family property cannot be divided. Number two, after the death of father, only male members of the family will get share, not the female members. So long as father is alive, family property cannot be distributed. And after the death of the father, only male members will get a share from the family property, not the female members. After the death of the father, only male members of the family will get share, not the female member. Number three, property of the father includes his self earned property and ancestral property. Here, property of the father includes his self Earn property which he has earned as well as ancestral property. Four, property can be transferred on the basis of succession. Property can be transferred on the basis of succession. Means after the death of the father, his sons will get share of the family property. Fifth, father has absolute authority over his self earned property and ancestral property. So long as father is alive, he has absolute authority over his self earned property and ancestral property. Son becomes heir only after the death of the father. Sons will become legal heir or coparcenary after the death of the father. Sons will get, son will be legal heir of the family property after the death of the father. This is the views of Dwayabhad school about the inheritance property. Now see, Property rights in matrilineal society, in the society where mother is the head, in the society, what is the property rights, property rights of for women? Following are the provisions. In this system, mother is the head of the family, and only female children will get share in the mother's property. In the system, matrilineal 
system, mother is the head of the family, and female members of the family will get a share from the family property. Male children will not get any share from the family property. Male children will not get any share from the family property. Number three, at the time of distribution of family property, brother of mother plays a major role. At the time of distribution of family property, mother's brother will play a major role. This is all about property rights in the matrilineal society. Then property rights in matrilineal society where father is the head. Following the provision. In this system, father is the head of the family and only male, mem, male children will get a share from the family property. In the system, patrilineal system, father is the head of the family and only male members will get share from the family property. Girl children will not get share from the family property. Girl children will not get any share from the family property. Till the marriage of girls, her expenditure were bared by family members. So long as girl is not married, her expenses will be bared by family members. So this is all about the inherent, all about the provisions relating to inheritance of family property. Now see property rights of women in Hindu Succession Act 1956. So what are the what Hindu Succession Act 1956 speaks about inheritance of property. Following that provision, property of female Hindu to be his sole property, S O L E. Property of female Hindu will be her property of female Hindu will be her sole property. She is the full owner of it, not partial owner of it. The property which a woman has over that property that woman has full authority, not personal authority. Number two, both sons and daughters have equal share in father's property. Both sons and daughters have equal share in father's property. Now see, property rights in Hindu Succession Act 2005. Property rights in Hindu Succession Act 2005. A daughter has same right as son in father's property irrespective of her martial status. In Hindu Succession Act 2005, it is mentioned that a woman has equal right, a son has a daughter has equal right with a daughter has equal right with son in the father's property, irrespective of his martial status. Even if the daughter is married or not, it is not important. Even if he is married or not married, like son, a daughter will get equal share from father's property. Number two, she is legal heir of parental property. A daughter is the legal heir of female, female property, which is the Kupar scenario. Then, other provisions relating to inheritance of property. Supreme Court has that women like son are legal heir of the ancestral property of father. Supreme Court of India has made it clear that that women like son, daughter like son are legal heir of ancestral property of father. Supreme Court has told that daughter like son have equal share in the family property, in the father's ancestral property. Both daughter and son have equal share in father's ancestral property. Number two, father can distribute his self earned property on the basis of his wish, but he cannot deny ancestral property to his daughter. If father can give his self earned property on the basis of his wish, but he cannot deny his ancestral property to his daughter. If father cannot deny ancestral, his ancestral property to daughter. So in this video we have discussed property rights of women in India. I request my viewers to watch the white board and to listen to me so that this video will be useful. And any video you want, just write my name Dili Kumar Pal in YouTube and the name of the topic, you will get both Odia and English video if videos are available. Thank you. Have a very nice day.